Hi and welcome to this video lecture on polytropic processes. In the last video lecture we talked about the ideal gas model. Today we're going to talk about these polytropic processes. It's just a relationship between pressure and volume when we're dealing with gases in, in thermodynamic processes. So go ahead and take a look at your screen. The picture here we have is of a jet engine being tested. The inlet of the jet engines over here, here's the exhaust. You see this really interesting phenomenon in the exhaust here. Those are called mock diamonds or sometimes they're called shock diamonds. It's a topic that you'll get some exposure to if you take a fluid mechanics course. It's really covered more in a graduate level gas dynamics or compressible flow course. But the modeling involved in predicting the behavior in these mock diamonds involves the ideal gas law a topic we covered in the last lecture we'll talk about it again briefly in this lecture so again the analysis of a lot of high-speed gas flows involves the ideal gas model okay so let's go ahead and talk about polytropic processes in particular so a polytropic process you have had some exposure to this concept in some example problems that I've worked on the web some video lectures and You've seen this sort of thing before, but we're going to just dedicate today's short lecture on this. So a polytropic process is one where P times V raised to the N is some constant, where this is the pressure, the absolute pressure. V is the volume. N is some exponent, some constant. And those multiplied together is equal to some constant. So you know, for example, if you're dealing with the ideal gas law, PV equals MRT. If you're dealing, for example, with a, a, an isothermal situation where the temperature is a constant, of course the mass is a constant and the gas constant is constant, then that's a type of polytropic process because you'd have PV is equal to a constant where the N here would be equal to 1, right? The exponent N right up here would be 1. So that's an example of a polytropic process. Now you don't have to be dealing with an ideal gas, but many polytropic processes involve ideal gases. So just to kind of sketch what a polytropic process might look like on a PV diagram, it really depends on what kind of what, what the N is, but just you know a typical kind of process might look something like this. This might be PV N is equal to 1 is equal to a constant, for example. You know, something like that. Okay. It doesn't have to look like this. It, like I said, it all depends on what the exponent n is. But, you know, it's, this expression traces out a relationship between pressure and volume. Notice, by the way, I, just, I have a volume here and I have specific volume. You can do it either way. You can also write PV, little v, to the n is equal to a constant. That's a polytropic process as well. So when n is equal to zero, the process is isobaric, meaning the pressure is a constant. So that would just be P is equal to a constant because V raised to the N would just be equal to 1, uh, where N is 0. So V raised to the 0 would just be 1. So it would just be P is a constant. So on this plot, it would just look like a, a line, horizontal line. If N is plus or minus infinity, then the process is isometric. That means that the specific volume or the volume is a constant. So that would be like a vertical line in that situation. Let me erase this. If N is equal to 1 and the gas is ideal, then the process is isothermal. So that's this one I showed here where the temperature is a constant. And something that we'll talk about a little bit later in the course is if N is equal to the specific heat ratio, so K here is the specific heat ratio, so just equal to Cp over Cv, if N is equal to the specific heat ratio and the gas is ideal, that corresponds to an isentropic process. We haven't covered what isentropic means yet, but it means when the entropy remains constant in the process. So that'll be an important one we'll cover later in the course. So a lot of times we're interested in the amount of pressure work done during a process. So the amount of pressure work done by a gas in a polytropic process we can determine. So what I'm talking about here is like gas in a piston, like in the picture shown on the right. The gas would be our, our system, and we're interested in knowing the amount of work done by the system on the surroundings in that case. So the way we can calculate that 
is its typical PDV type of work. Let me redraw my V. So the, type, the pressure work done by the system is just PDV work. We can write down our expression for the polytropic process, just kind of rearrange it. Remember, P, V to the N is equal to a constant. So that means that P is equal to the constant times V to the minus N, which we can substitute in. That'd be constant times V to the minus N dV. Of course, the constant can come outside the integral. And then when we integrate this, that's a straightforward integral to do, but it depends on what the value of n is. So let me write this out. So this would be, there are going to be two different expressions that we get. One will be when v, when n is not equal to 1. So in that case, we'll get the following. So this is going back to your basic calculus, just how to integrate something raised to a power. So that's what we would get if n is not equal to 1. And if n is equal to 1, then this expression looks like dv over v in that case, and that will give us a natural log. That's when n is equal to 1. Now, as far as finding what the constant is, C, that we can find usually from some initial or final conditions. So you see that P, V to the N is equal to a constant. If we know the initial or final conditions, then it would be like P1, V1 raised to the N, or P2, V2 raised to the N. So we know what the value of that constant is. So we can go ahead and let, let me make use of that information, and I'll substitute it in for the constant. So for this one, when I multiply it by the V2, I'm going to use the P2, V2 raised to the N when I, when I do that multiplication. And then when I do this constant times V1, I'm going to use this one. So let me express that so you can see it. So this will be the constant times V2. I'm going to use P2, V2 raised to the N. And that will be multiplied by V2, 1 minus N. And then when I multiply the constant times V1, I'll use P1, V1 raised to the n multiplied by v1 to the 1 minus n. Down here, I'll just keep it as, I don't know, p1 v1 raised to the n. Doesn't really matter for the bottom expression. Okay, and the reason I wanted to do that for the upper expression is because now you see we have v2 to the n and that'll cancel out with this v2 minus n term. Same sort of thing here with v1 to the n, v1 to the minus n there. So then when we expand that out, we're going to get the following. This will be p2 v2 minus p1 v1 all over 1 minus n. And then the, and that's, that's the expression that we get top one is the expression we get for n is not equal to 1. And then the bottom one looks the same for n is equal to 1. So this is the work done by the system. Alright, so that's the amount of work done by the system in a polytropic process. And that's true for whether the gas is ideal or not ideal. Okay. And you don't have to memorize what these formulas are, so don't, don't worry about trying to memorize it. If you just know how to start with PDV work, and then you just substitute in this expression for the pressure here, you can do all the math yourself. You can just recreate it. I find it easier to remember the steps during a derivation rather than trying to remember the exact formulas. It's easy to forget all the different symbols and such. But if you can just remember PDV work, and then know how to manipulate the p, v to the n equals a constant, then you're in good shape. If you're dealing with an ideal gas, then you have the ideal gas law that you could combine with this expression. I'll write it this way with a capital V. So PV is equal to MRT, where this is the 
volume, and that's the mass. And so I could substitute in for like the P2 and V2 and P1, V1, I can substitute in terms of these. So for an ideal gas, ideal gas specifically, then the top expression becomes MR1 minus N times T2 minus T1. And then the bottom expression would just become, oh, by the way, um, in this bottom expression, N here would just be equal to 1 in this case. So this would just be MRT1 times natural log of, we'll just leave it as V2 over V1. So this would be the expression you get if you're dealing specifically with an ideal gas. The top just becomes a little bit easier with T2 minus T1 in that case. And then and then the bottom expression just looks pretty, it doesn't look all that different from the expression here. It's just I, I wrote in for the PV term here just using the ideal gas law. Okay, and again, I, I wouldn't worry about memorizing these formulas. All you need to do again is just go back to the idea of the pressure work being integral P dV, knowing how to deal with the P V to the N equals a constant, and then if it's an ideal gas, you can just make use of the ideal gas law as well. But I just wanted to show you how you could do these calculations to figure out the work done during these different polytropic processes. We talk about polytropic processes because many of the processes we deal with look like polytropic processes. Like I mentioned at the very beginning here, where if n is equal to zero, it's isobaric. If it's infinite, then it's isometric, so meaning just specific volumes are constant. And since we deal a lot with ideal gases, often we'll deal with isothermal processes and ones that are isotropic, which we'll talk about later. So these polytropic processes do show up pretty often. All right, I think with that, we'll go ahead and end the lecture, take a look at some of the examples I posted online as well.